Chi, Raj, thank you very much. Uh, I will be talking about uh, our joint efforts with InterSystems and sponsored by InterSystems about uh, migrating the um, uh, I2B2 uh, core predominantly, uh, but essentially a uh, I2B2 instance, the entire instance, instance and the uh, web client. Uh, to work on InterSystems Iris platform. Uh, I'm the head of the healthcare practice for first line software and Olga Verovkina is our project manager and technical analyst who has been working on this uh, project as well as a number of other projects we've been working on uh, with InterSystems and on InterSystems technologies. So uh, two words, a couple of words about the company. Uh, the company was found in 2009. Uh, we have around 200, 750, more than 750 more employees around the world. Uh, we're global, uh, have all offices in pretty much every continent, uh, have been engaged in healthcare um, since for over 20 years. Uh, uh, by proxy of acquisition 2016. Uh, by first line of another company that I've been working uh, with for uh, for 13 years before that. Um, and we pretty much focus on uh, every uh, major areas of healthcare and life sciences, uh, including development of uh, clinical systems and integration uh, of them, real world evidence research, uh, um, data, data management and analytics with uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, the development of mobile and wearable technologies. Uh, we work on a lot of clinical research applications, including um, uh, uh, patient reported outcomes, quality measurements. And pretty much uh, I was kind of excited to listen to Josh because uh, he mentioned uh, uh, we, we, we're engaged in just about major, every major topic that Josh mentioned. We uh, work with Fire, uh, work with uh, uh, CDS Cooks, uh, we uh, integrate using Smart and Fire, and we use NLP engines, um, including I know our clients are uh, academic medical centers, uh, um, Big Pharma, uh, pretty much whole range of uh, organizations involved in healthcare and life sciences, and partners and uh, uh, MGB, Mass General Brigham has been a client for the last 20 years, and uh, uh, we are currently engaged in a number of ongoing operational and clinical projects. And I'm very excited to hear and see uh, 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 folks that I've been working with for quite some time. Um, quickly about what happens, uh, what, what I'm going to be talking about. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the how we uh, achieved the uh, uh, compatibility between uh, I2B2 and uh, Iris as a uh, backend database. The reality is Iris is much more than uh, a database, and uh, Chen Raj already talked about that. Um, and then um, at the end, I'll uh, spend a, few, a couple of words, uh, talk, spend a couple of minutes or a couple of words about uh, our kind of initiative called Cohort Builder, which is essentially a workflow, uh, uh, workflow initiative uh, built on top of uh, Iris interoperability engine uh, in support of clinical research. Um, very quickly, this presentation is uh, uh, two things. Uh, it is uh, uh, a, a description of what we have done, and also a little bit of a guidance for anyone who, who is planning to use uh, I2B2 on top of uh, Iris uh, and uh, uh, some of the, some of the uh, points that uh, or uh, topics that they have to deal with when, when they use Iris as a backend platform. So essentially our efforts is kind of broken up into four uh, uh, elements, uh, set up and configure environment, uh, migrate uh, reference data set and uh, 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 test uh, I2B2 schema and data uh, on top of Iris, and then extend and modify I2B2 core uh, in support of Iris uh, as a backend database, and then 
uh, spend some time in um, tuning performance, improve uh, uh, tune and improve performance, do analysis, and uh, in addition to that, work with the ledger uh, data sets. Uh, we started with 300 patients, but we are in the process of loading Cynthia to be to COVID-19 data set with 1.2 million patients. Uh, and at the end, of course, we plan to publish this to the uh, open source community. Um, very quickly, uh, we're running on a fairly standard uh, uh, hardware stack. Um, um, just, just for reference, I listed it here. Um, the, uh, um, the process of uh, uh, the kind of steps in the process includes first uh, uploading I to be data. So we're using Postgres as a backend database and I to be to data first initially loaded to Postgres. Then uh, uh, using data migration wizard, we loaded uh, uh, we loaded uh, the data into the into Iris and uh, spent a substantial amount of time comparing uh, the data, the schema, and the results of execution of queries uh, against Postgres and Iris. Uh, on top of that, we spent some time uh, optimizing. Uh, performance and finding ways to optimize performance to achieve uh, uh, equivalent or uh, actually, um, as you will see later on, a much better performance that we uh, see on Postgres uh, database. Um, the next thing that we've done is we extended uh, the I2B2 uh, instance and to be 2 core, in fact, um, in support of virus, and that has taken us a very substantial effort as uh, the query generation process within A2B2 core is uh, spread over a large number of files and uh, um, uh, require changes across uh, entire A2B2 uh, core uh, Java code. Um, and the changes that we made are not simply let's uh, extend uh, extend the core to execute uh, uh, SQL and Iris, but also to achieve better performance and modify queries in a way that they would perform better. Uh, and the kind of the baseline uh, part of the effort was to uh, essentially relentlessly testing uh, SQL performance uh, between Iris and Postgres and see where the differences are, where complexities are, and resolve them as, as we progress. Um, the, um, uh, we we uh, ended with pretty impressive, yeah, before, before I talk about the achievements and performance, I wanted to mention that we used pretty standard set of uh, reference queries uh, that uh, uh, our team uh, uh, found uh, as part of test, test with that I2B2 community is using. Um, I, I listed them here, but essentially there are 11 queries that we focused on. And here is a, probably the most, if I had nothing else to show, but this slide, this would be very important. This is the result of our uh, performance testing and performance optimization uh, as a result of relatively uh, small uh, changes in the SQL uh, syntax generated by uh, uh, I2B2 client, uh, we achieved uh, uh, essentially improvements in performance between 30 to 100% uh, of our SQL performance um, on Postgres. Uh, in Postgres. Uh, however, uh, the picture is not really as uh, beautiful as, as it seems from the previous slide. Um, when we run the client and we generate the queries from the client, the uh, uh, performance of the queries are um, uh, not as impressive as uh, when we run uh, queries directly uh, against Iris versus, uh, versus Postgres. And uh, the reason is that uh, we're seeing some complexities and uh, um, 
uh, sort of performance issues with JDBC driver, and we're working with Inter Systems to understand the uh, uh, understand the limitations and optimize the execution. Uh, there are also certain aspects of I2B2 client itself. Uh, it opens a large number of connections, and uh, uh, since we are working with or trying to deliver the solution on open source instance of Iris. There are certain limitations on the number of open connections, and we are working on uh, connection polling and addressing those issues as well. Um, these are a few examples of the changes that uh, were made uh, in the queries, uh, and those changes uh, resulted in the improvements that I just showed you. And you can, as you can see, the um, uh, the changes are relatively meaningful and simple, but they uh, produced a very substantial result improvement. Anatoly, I'm just given a time warning. We have about three minutes left. Fantastic. Thank you. So uh, things that still left for us to do, we, we're still working on the improvements of the uh, uh, performance and resolutions of the issues with the uh, uh, with the uh, driver. Uh, we are in process of loading a uh, larger data set and uh, testing uh, performance of the application on that data set. Um, uh, we also uh, we're also about to complete the analysis uh, 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 complete the implementation of I2B2 core in support of uh, uh, in support of the um, uh, of Iris as a backend uh, with plugins that are available within I2B2 client and uh, we're working on the resolving connection pool uh, connection pool connection pool issues. Uh, Quickly switching gears, and I wanted to talk for uh, a little bit about the cohort builder. So uh, what we realized is that uh, there are quite a substantial complexity in the workflow for researchers when they, uh, uh, when they develop, uh, uh, when they find, find patients, uh, uh, eligible patients for, for studies. Uh, they have to run through multiple queries, uh, uh, test hypothesis, that's a, a substantial effort. Queries, uh, interactive queries, uh, especially in large data sets are very slow. Uh, the data may reside in, multi in multiple data sets, very often different institutions uh, in different formats. And uh, uh, everyone knows that two OMOP or two I2B2 nodes are not the same. Uh, ontologies are different, terminology may be different. Uh, there may be different versions of the model. Uh, the data is limited, has limited access between sites. Uh, there is, once you complete it, uh, uh, obtain certain number of patients or found certain number of patients, you want access to the uh, identifiable data, you need to request approval. So approval process takes time. So this is a really, really long and often uh, complex project, uh, complex effort, a complex effort. So what we're trying to do is to create a uh, a workflow uh, application that is built on top of uh, Iris Interoperability Engine, which is, by the way, a, a fantastic technology and by itself, uh, but uh, we're putting over a kind of face to it that is friendly to the user. And uh, you, you would be able to uh, perform queries, uh, uh, um, schedule, schedule queries, define multiple queries against multiple federated data sets. This is available in, in different instances, like, such as uh, within uh, a shrine uh, infrastructure, but uh, um, this is kind of, you know, uh, uh, another effort combined with the other, other elements of the workflow, such as uh, ability to uh, pipe uh, queries together, pipe queries with NLP engines, ability to receive notifications and reports directly from the uh, uh, from the application when uh, execution completes streamline approval process uh, receive notifications and so on export data in pretty much any format uh, that uh, is available so this is pretty much my presentation happy to answer any questions Olga also has a demo uh, but I think we're running out uh, out of time I'm happy to answer any questions and that's probably going to be Any questions? Thank you, Anatoly. Any questions from the group? Or certainly if you think of things later, you can put it in the question box. Anatoly, it looks like 
Um, somebody wants to know where you can find out more information about this project. Uh, from Chi, from myself, uh, the uh, uh, current version of I2B2 on Iris is published to the Open Exchange. Uh, we, we're happy to share that, as well as uh, as well as the latest version will be published uh, with with I2B2 client working on Iris will be pu published in the next uh, couple of weeks probably. Uh, but please feel free to reach out. Happy to answer any questions.